you guys. Just want to give you some more info on Susan Harjo and her piece, Last Rites for the Indian Dead. So one wonderful thing about America is the ability to have freedom of speech, which is protected by the First Amendment of the Constitution. The idea is that you can have freedom of speech without fear of persecution or punishment. And because of that, Americans are free to point out society's problems and criticize. Um, for example, you can criticize the behavior of a corporation or a company, but you can even criticize the government itself without fear of going to jail or, or worse. And this is precisely what Susan Harjo does in Last Rites for the Indian Dead. So after she grabs your attention in the very beginning, she establishes a very firm but a logical tone for her piece. She's never overly emotional. She remains logical throughout the entire piece, but she moves us very carefully into the facts. She provides the audience with several examples of the mistreatment of Native American remains, and some are personal and some are drawn from historical record, things that have happened in history. If you look over here in these, these rectangles here, um, she gives us three concrete examples. She talks about how the mistreatment of Native Americans, in particular, um, she comes from the perspective of a Cheyenne woman. She says that the remains of thousands of members of her tribe were shipped to museums and institutes to be studied in the 1800s, um, but the studies never led to anything. Nothing ever was done with any of the remains, and so she sees it as especially offensive because one, the remains have been desecrated, uh, but two, they didn't even use them for anything. Uh, and then she provides another example. Having multiple examples when you're making an argument is especially helpful. She says that there are people out there who are relic hunters, who destroy burial grounds, take sacred offerings, and then they sell them for a profit. Uh, and that clearly is an insult to the spiritual beliefs of, of Native Americans. I mean, most cultures don't allow people to just take remains and, and sell them and use them. Um, highly, highly offensive. And then she talks about medical benefits. She says that they had discussed how maybe the remains could be used to study um, for diseases and, and get medical information, sort of study for science. But she says nothing has ever been found that would be useful. So the desecration ultimately was, was pointless. No medical benefits um, have been gleaned for living Native Americans based upon studying those bones. So she says that the studies led to nothing, relic hunting is offensive, and no one that's currently living, as far as she knows, has benefited from any of the medical studies. There's been no medical benefits. So those are three concrete examples that she uses to make her argument. And what purpose does it serve? Um, by including quotations from experts and statistics to support her claims, Harjo proves that mistreatment commonly occurred but that it was openly permitted, even encouraged for generations. She calls into question the ethics and morality of this kind of behavior and the fact that authorities did absolutely nothing to stop it. And that really brings us to the purpose of the editorial. Um, and this particular question is actually in the lesson for you to answer, so I'm not gonna go over it right here. Um, but think about the fact that she's really calling into question people's ethics, that. The government has done nothing to stop what she sees as clear, a clearly immoral act. She also mentions in her argument that there has been some relief for Native American people on the state level. She mentions states like California, for example, have passed laws protecting Indian burial sites and restricting the sale of Indian bones, burial offerings, and other sacred items. She mentions two senators, um, Charles Bennett, uh, Democrat, and John McCain, Republican. Yep, John McCain is still here um, all these years later, who both introduced bills that were a good start, she thought, in invoking federal government's protection. But she says, still no legislation has 
really attack the problem head on. She wants stiff penalties imposed at the marketplace so that it becomes completely illegal to make dead Indians, as she says, the nation's property. They should go back to where they came from and be able to rest. If you notice here, her attitude toward these efforts is kind of like, meh, they sort of did a good job, but you have a lot more to go. Um, and that's partly because I think she's also trying to say some positive things here too about what's been going on, um, but it's not enough. The government has not done enough. So she has to be very, very clear and make sure that her praise is, is sort of tempered, being that a lot more needs to be done. Um, and this is where she gives her, her solution. Her solution to impose stiff penalties at the marketplace or by changing laws that make dead Indians the nation's property. Again, in an editorial, we talked about this with our media literacy unit. It's not just meant to inform. It's designed to persuade. And part of being super persuasive is not only being able to say, hey, here's the problem, but also being able to say, I have a solution. And that's what she's doing in this editorial. Let's take a look at this paragraph here. She says, there remains a reluctance generally among collectors of Indian remains to take action of a scope that would have a quantitative impact and healing quality. If they will not act on their own, and it is highly unlikely that they will, then Congress must act. The country must recognize that the bodies of dead American Indian people are not artifacts to be bought and sold as collector's items. It is not appropriate to store tens of thousands of our ancestors for possible future research. They are our family. They deserve to be returned to the sacred burial grounds and given a chance to rest. The plunder of our people's graves has gone on too long let us rebury our dead and remove this shameful past from America's future. Okay, so she sees as sort of that people aren't gonna act on their own. It's not like collectors are just gonna stop out of nowhere and say, oh, this is wrong, we don't care about profit. She's saying clearly Congress has to step in and pass the federal law on this issue. It's the only way that this desecration is going to stop. And that's what she's asking for very, very clearly here. Congress has to act. She says it right here. It is not enough um, to just expect that collectors will, will take action because historically they really haven't. Okay. You consider the final two paragraphs of Harjo's editorial. She uses very Strong words, strong diction, family, sacred, plunder, shameful. Think about the effect these words have on you when you read it. Pretty strong effect. She's saying these remains are family, they are sacred, and it's shameful to plunder and steal them. These are strong words designed to evoke emotion and to persuade you that this is the morally right thing to do. Harjo's editorial also focuses on an issue related to cultural heritage and identity. Respecting the remains of the dead is important, really to all people. I can't think of any culture that doesn't have respect for, for their dead family members, but it is particularly important to Native Americans because they have witnessed the mistreatment of their ancestors' remains for so many decades and just mistreatment in general since the beginning of European settlers um, coming here. So. Her work isn't just about the values and issues that matter to Native Americans. She's also invoking several important core values in the United States that if we stand for freedom and we stand for morality and all these things, then we have to change this. And I think by evoking these, these ideas, she makes a very strong argument that's hard to ignore. It's all about the power of protest. The subject of her editorial is specifically related to Native Americans, obviously, but the core values that she's evoking, equality for all people, protecting the rights of the minority, these are values that the United States has long professed to have. In fact, even this format she chooses, the editorial, is very, very American. It's a piece of American tradition of respecting freedom of press and the freedom of expression, even when free expression 
is criticizing our country or the people or its government. It's a very, very American idea and the idea that she is allowed to do this. And it shows you how powerful protest can be.